Today I want to share with you something called I'm done folders, which is a great system to put in place that you never hear that dreaded question, I'm done, now what? This system can be put in place at the beginning of the school year and carry you all the way through with limited work on your end as long as you are ready to differentiate for your kids and make a few copies. So let's share. What is an I'm done folder? An I'm done folder is a folder that is filled with work specific to that individual that they will keep with them to take out whenever they complete an assignment and the teacher has not given them something else to do. I'm done folders are also good for when there's an interruption in the classroom, like the phone ringing or a visitor at the door and the teacher needs a few minutes. She can tell them to just take out their I'm done folder. This creates a lot of really active engaged learning time that would necessarily be downtime and it also helps prevent a lot of behavior problems because when kids are busy they are less likely to get into trouble so we want to make sure we're utilizing our class time we're managing our classroom behaviors and we're doing everything we can to differentiate and to, um, benefit our children so how do you set up i'm done folders every kid gets a folder i like to label it with their name and it says i'm done folder you have to designate a spot in your room for these folders. You wanna keep them in the same spot all the time because you don't want kids interrupting you, asking where their folders are, it kind of defeats the purpose, right? We're trying to put something in place that's going to eliminate disruptions when you're working with a small group and that they can do independently. So pick a spot in the room and keep them there all year. For me, my kids never had desks, they worked at tables, so they had seat sacks on the back of their chairs, and their chairs, and their undone folders stayed in their seat sacks. Yes, there were times they were working outside of their little space when we were doing centers or an activity that we had to move around, but majority of the time, kids were at their seats, which meant their undone folders were nearby. The less opportunities they have to get up, to walk around, especially our little ones, without asking for permission, the less trouble they're most likely to get in. And when I say trouble, I don't mean doing something bad. I just mean stopping to talk to a friend, maybe disrupting someone who's working really hard, right? We wanna stay focused throughout the day as much as possible. So once you've gotten your folders labeled and you've picked a spot in your room, you have to fill these folders with work. So the kind of work you want to put in these folders are no prep worksheets that require no cutting and that have the same set of directions on multiple pages. Let me share why. You want no prep worksheets because this is not a part of your curriculum. You're busy enough lesson planning to go along with your curriculum. This is extra to keep those fast finishers busy. No prep's the way to go. Just print it, staple it, put it in those folders. You don't want anything with cutting because this is something kids are going to work on interrupted multiple times throughout the day. So if the worksheet requires cutting, there's a strong possibility that they're going to lose some of those pieces or they're going to be mid cutting when you tell them that it's time to move on. And that just creates more hassle sometimes. If you have worksheets that only require things that are right there at their desk that they cannot lose like a pencil and crayons, they're going to be able to um, complete these worksheets without losing anything or getting frustrated. And lastly, I said you want sheets that have repetitive instructions on multiple pages. And that's because with the little ones, they may not be able to read the directions themselves. So you need something where you can sit down with them and show them one page or model a page or two with them and then they can take off and work independently. If there's a different set of instructions on each page, guess who's going to be coming up to you after each page and asking what to do? So we're trying to eliminate that, right? So if you have something where it is to, you know, circle the picture that matches the CBC word and there's multiple pages of that, you can show them one time and they can run with it whenever they finish their work. So keep that in mind when creating these packets. Now, we need to also create incentive because what five-year-old is going to want to willingly do extra work when they could be talking to their friends? So for me, I bought one of those large incentive charts, wrote, charts, wrote all their names on it, numbers across the top, and every time they completed their I'm done packet, they got a sticker. Every three stickers, they got a prize for the prize box. 
the prize box for kindergartners is like telling them they won the lotto. So that created enough incentive for my children to want to work on it when they finish their work without me having to remind them or push them to do it. Here's where differentiating comes in. You don't want your children who don't often have extra time or who are struggling with certain skills to feel any certain way because they're not getting those three stickers and they're not getting an opportunity to pick out of the prize box. You want a level playing ground for everyone. So those packets should be based on the child. Don't just run off 35 sheets of something, staple it and give it to the whole class. That's not fair and it's not going to benefit all of the kids. Look at your data from progress monitoring. I use my data assessment data assessments and tracker to determine which skills the kids are going to get. And then I also determine how many pages to give them based on how often during the day do they actually have an opportunity to work on this. So if Raymond is always finishing his work early and has a lot of extra time because he's one of my more advanced students, I'm going to give him more challenging skills because I'm gonna look at where he is and what I can push him with, but that he can still do independently. And I'm going to give him a thicker packet because he's having a lot of opportunities to work on this. Whereas if Matthew is taking a very long time on his tasks every day, rarely has extra time and is struggling when he works independently, I'm going to give Matthew a skill that he can do independently and I'm going to give him very little pages because Matthew's not going to have as many opportunities to finish it, but I still want Matthew to have opportunities to work on it and get a sticker, right? So that's where you have to think about this. It does take some sort of progress monitoring, but you should all be doing that anyway to know what skills your kids could be working on. And it doesn't all have to be the same subject. Some kids could be working on phonics, some could be working on math. You use your judgment, which you want them to have extra practice on. These I'm done folders are amazing. Think about it. You come in in the morning, you're trying to do a million things like who can't get their jacket off, whose mom wrote you a note you have to read, who's walking in late, the phone's ringing because you forgot to do attendance for the hundredth time that year, and the class is sitting there waiting for their morning meeting. If you set the expectations from the beginning of the year that whenever there is downtime, they work on those undone packets, you will be amazed. I had five-year-olds coming into the room, unpacking, and just seeing me get caught up in something and taking out those undone packets and working quietly and independently until I called their tables to start our day and go to our morning meeting. Or when I was working with a small group and they finished their centers early, but my small group was taking a little more time than I had anticipated. These kids were just taking out their work and working on it. I didn't even have to say anything after a while. What a great opportunity to include more learning, right? And what a great way to manage classroom behaviors and set those expectations that like in this classroom, we work hard all the time. So I'm gonna take a minute to show you some um, examples of worksheets that I would put in I'm Done folders. And of course, if you have any questions about this, please reach out to me. I know that if you try to instill this system in your room, you are going to love it and you're going to use it over and over again every single year. I would include in an I'm done folder for a child that needs work on letter identification. On these worksheets, children have to do the same thing on each page, but focusing on a different letter. They must trace the uppercase and lowercase letters on the flower pot and then find the two flowers that have the same letter and color them in. By having repeating directions on each page, children will be able to do this independently if you sit with them and model one or two pages for them. After this, they can complete the whole pack on their own. Repetitive type worksheet that would work great in an I'm done folder. These worksheets focus on CVC words. Children have to read the word in the robot's stomach and then circle the picture that matches. Each page has different images on it However, it has the same set of directions, which means once you show children how to do it, they will be able to work on this independently, making it a perfect I'm done folder activity.
receipts, and more on Teachers Pay Teachers by searching for me, Mrs. V's Chickadees, or by going to mrsvschickadees.com. I have a full year of no prep phonics worksheets that follow the guidelines I suggest for I'm Done folders. Children will have an opportunity to work on letter formation, letter sounds, CVC words, CVCE words, rhyming words, word families, digraphs, blends, and syllables. Make sure to grab your bundle today.